This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There's an um, amazing uh, story. I told it a few times on the righteous man, the Bala Sulam, that once he asked his students to sing for him a, a song of, of praise to the Creator, but he asked them to sing that song, a song with no words, only the melody. And then they, uh, they started, they start singing that song, and in the end, one of his students asked him why, if he wanted to praise Hashem, why he asked us to praise him with no words, why, why only the melody. So he said, I cannot express my gratitude in words, so I wanted to just to sing. So I met a person that was a righteous man that was in that, in that time, in that meal, in Lagba Omer it was in Meron, and, uh, and he, so he said that the song is a very, it's called the song of salvation, Mizmor, the sing of, of, of Yeshuot, of salvations, it was like that. And once I've been to, after the that righteous man that I told you about him, he passed away. So I went to his grave with, the, what, with his, the, his main helper, and and he we were discussing something about the redemption, and uh, I'm, I'm 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 very strong. I'm I'm going with my my way, my uh, with my thing about redemption, with my method, and uh, and I told him that thing, and then he said. And then he said, okay, let's pray for it. I'm asking for big things and when it comes to redemption. So, so he told me, okay, let's pray for it. And then we went and we started like, asking for Hashem. And after half an hour of Hidbodedut, of prayer like that, we came back to the, to the grave, to that siyun of, of that righteous man. And he looked at me and I looked at him. And then suddenly the, the alarm for Shabbos, the speaker, the large speaker of Bnei Brak in Israel, start playing that song. And he looked at me, the helper of that righteous man, and told me your prayers have been answered for sure. So I told him, why, why are you saying that? So he said, the alarm of, of Shabbat never plays that, plays that song. Like, Never. It's not. He he lives in Bnei Brak. He knows the songs of, and it was Thursday night or something like. It was not. It. It was just for us, in the grave of that righteous man that been in that seuda, and uh, that that was part of those students that were singing for the Bala Sulam that song of salvations. And uh, how much we need to believe in ourselves. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying in Likutei Moran about the verse that is uh, describing Elijah, the prophet, Eliyahu Navi, when he rise to the, to the sky, to heaven, 
that he was overpowering the, the flaming horses of fire and riding on them in the storm and he didn't die. He climbed up to heaven riding those flaming, firing horses in the storm. There was a storm, there was a huge storm over there. And, and he was overpowering, he was controlling those flaming horses riding the storm. And he didn't die. And when I read that Torah, so it reminded me of a Midrash that is describing the, um, the way to climb up, to see, to vision the face of the Creator, of the Almighty. And in that Midrash, that called Midrash Heichalot, on the halls, the, the places, the floors, there are seven levels of heaven. And you can see and experience, visualize the Creator in all of those seven halls. And there are names that you must know, and you must know how to pronounce them. And also you need to be a very solid in your spirit while meditating and climbing to those walls, to, to those places, to those floors, to have the ability to stand in front of the angels that are protecting and defending the Almighty, His honor that won't be disgraced. And you need to have the ability to stand in front of them and not to be scared by them, not to be terrified. And then to pronounce the holy name of Hashem. And if you are able to do that, so you can see Him. And then you can ask permission to climb to the next level, to the next floor. And then you have a bigger, harder test. You need to mention a holier name and, and you have to have, you know, your skills to, to, to be stable and, and calm and relax and solid in front of the next group of angels that are stronger, holier. And, and, and so the Midrash over there is, is describing the, the, the warriors, the angels that are protecting the Hashem, the Creator, so to speak. Hashem's honor, Hashem's respect, and He's describing them in many ways. And part of those angels are flaming horses or horses that are made of smoke and lightnings and thunders are coming out of their eyes and flaming fires from their nostrils and, 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 their, fa and, and their eyes are like, and, and, and they're coming in the storm and so... Before every spiritual level that a person is climbing in his life, first of all, what did he meet is the storm. First of all, those flaming, firing horses and thunders and lightnings and angels are coming to block the person from disrespecting the Creator. Before of every achievement in Avodat Hashem, while trying to serve the Creator, you have obstacles, you have difficulties. That is the storm that is trying to hold you back. Why? Because we are guilty in many things. We messed up big time in many, many lifetimes even before we came here. And also in our life, we were not holy enough, we're not pure enough, we're not righteous enough. We're trying. There is a very nice, beautiful Kaf um, Schut. Uh, um, how do you say Kaf Schut? Looking at us with a good eye. And, and th there is a lot of grace while, while, while checking us, while looking at us. They're judging us favorably. And, and when, but still, we cannot argue with the fact that we're not able to be 100% pure and holy and our thoughts are not being distracted and everything is perfect. We're not holding that level. So because of that, there are many reasons for the court of heaven to try to protect the honor, the respect of the Almighty. 
that we were not going to disgrace him while seeing him, while meeting him. For an example, if you're filthy, so it's okay to be filthy in the fields, but your wife will tell you, take off your muddy shoes before you come into the house, because the house is supposed to be cleaner than the outside. It's okay to go with your, with your uniform, with your outfit, with filthy clothes. You're outside, okay, you, you're working, it's okay, understandable, but in the house, you know, it's a... Take off your, your shoes, take off your sandals, like Hashem is saying to, to Moses, take off your shoes before you, you come to see Hashem. And the Zohar Kadosh is saying on that, when Moshe is coming to, to speak with Hashem, that even to Moses, when he was 80 years old, after 60 years of, of, of dedicating his life in the, in, the, in the desert, only to prayer on the redemption, Hashem is telling him, get rid of your impure body, the contaminated body from the poison of the snake, from the impurity that the snake put in the bodies of human beings. So even him, 80 years old Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, the giant, the holiest person on earth, no one can, 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 can understand who we're talking about, need to get rid of his impure body that is impure in leprosy of the snake. That's what the Zohar Kadosh is saying on, on, on Moses, on Hashem's words to Moses in that vision of, in the prophecy of the burning bush. So, even when Moses wants to reach to Hashem, he needs to work on his body. He needs to clean uh, off all the, all, the, all the filth, all the impure mm, mm, leprosies that have been glued to us, that have been attached to us. So, in every situation of your life, when you want to see Hashem, when you want to grow, when you want to succeed, when you want to come closer to the Creator, in every situation like that, obstacles will come and will try to reject you, not because you really are not worthy, just because that they're in a mission, they have their own job. And their job is to respect Hashem. Now, they couldn't care less about your motives and your reasons and the, the favorably and all that. They, they were not going to let no one get into Hashem's palace with filthy shoes. That's it. They, they have only one thing in their mind. You're not going to disrespect Hashem. That's their only thought. They've been created to respect Hashem. Now, you're coming with your cargo. You're coming with your leprosy, you're coming with your imaginations, with, with your mentality, with your character, with your sadness, with your depression, with your angers, with your filthy words, with your, hey, what's going on? I also want to see Hashem. It doesn't work like that. So what they're doing, they're attacking you. Who they are, they are those flaming horses of thunders, of lightnings, of, of, of darkness, of, of clouds, of, of fog that are protecting Hashem. And Moshe, on him, it been said that he went into the darkness. Kishama Elokim, because he knew that God is over there. He is not afraid of those flaming horses like Elijah the prophet, that he can overpower them even when they're coming in the storm. He will overpower them. He will control them and going to ride on the backs of those flaming horses up to heaven. Because he realized that Hashem is over there. Now when your faith is strong and solid, when you, your heart is a flaming fire to Father in heaven, to Hashem, so then for you also... The desire to be respectable and to, to respect Hashem, never to hurt Hashem's feelings, never to, to disrespect Hashem, always to be as righteous as you can. That holy desire is something that you also wish. It's not something foreign to you. You love the rebuke. You want to learn. When your desire is to serve the Creator, the rebuke for you is a favor. The, in, the insultings, the shames, the obstacles that you find you know, in your life are only waking you up to learn what you need to fix. And you're happy. You're jumping on those difficulties like you found a treasure. Because for you, it's learning time. It's amazing. Now I know what I need to be careful. 
from. Now I know what I was doing so wrong. Now I know exactly what was... Yes, now I figure it all out. Now I know. Now I'm going I'm to I'm work on myself on that. It's Wow, it's such a privilege. Thank you, Hashem. Because you remember that... At Asher Yohav Hashem Yochiach, that Hashem rebukes the one He loves. He rebukes you because He still got hope. He still holds faith in you that you want to learn, that you want to improve, that you want to fix yourself. So He's telling you exactly what you need to do to fix. And then you're not scared from the rebuke of those flaming horses and you can overpower them. And not only to overpower them, just also to use them as to, to assist you, to help you, to bring you straight to heaven, toward Hashem. You're going to ride on those flaming horses in the time of storm. And you're not going to be scared and you're not going to die. The Torah, when it's coming to teach us, and telling us what that took place in the lives of those righteous ones, it's coming to teach us about our potential. It's not coming to idolize Elijah the prophet. Elijah the prophet was a human being. He was a flesh and bone that developed and grew and cleaned himself and worked on his attributes and became that angel that we are now scared to mention his name. Moses was a person that came down to this world from two parents in years of exile in a foreign land, in an impure land, when all of his brothers and sisters were suffering and he was working on himself to improve himself, to work on his midot. And when he was wrong, he was able to do tshuva, and he was humbling himself. Abraham, Avraham Avinu, born from non-Jews, he was not Jewish. <coughs> he converted when he was 90 years old. You're talking about an 89 years old Goy, non-Jew. That's Avraham Avinu. Look at him when he was 89. Someone from, from, from Iraq. Someone from Iraq. 89 years old from Iraq walking in the desert with his five wife and, 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 and struggling, a shepherd. But he's seeking for the Creator with such passion that he cannot imagine. That you cannot even describe, even if, but, but, even if you're going to try. But how can you find that spark? If you're going to focus in your own faith, if you're going to stare into your own flaming soul, you're going to find what that you're seeking for. Because I, I, I'm not afraid to, to take an oath to swear to you on that in 100%. That like the Tabi Nachman of Weslev is writing, that the flaming fire of the heart of a person is rising like the pillar of fire in front of the camp of Israel. And it's a, it's a, it's a straight pillar of fire that never ends. <coughs> and if you're going to look inside, when someone is trying to hold me away from serving the Creator, I can cry in a second. Like I'm not able to deal with it. And it's not that I'm going to fight, it's not that I'm going to argue, but the sorrow from feeling the distance from doing the right thing, for me, is an impossible thing to feel. Why? Because I'm aware to my soul. I know exactly where my soul is carved from. I, I feel it. I know that inside of me there is a huge righteous man that lives only for one purpose. He wants to be one with Hashem. And he lives inside of me. Now, he's got his distractions, he's got his foreign thoughts, he's got his external world that is pulling him all of the time. But he lives inside. He lives eternal life inside of me. Now, I'm aware to him. And it's not that he lives inside of me and you don't know who I am. You don't know who you are. 
That's what I'm telling you. You don't know yet who you are. Because inside of you there is only one thing. An endless sea of wisdom. An endless spring of, of good and kindness and grace and beauty and generosity and happiness and satisfaction that never ends. That's who that you are. Now, you don't know how to express it. You don't know how to take it out. You don't know what to do with those feelings, with those thoughts. You, okay, how I'm going to... What am I doing? How am I going to channel all of that fire? Should I go with it to the synagogue? Should I learn? Should I pray? Should I work? Should I, should I play? Should I sing? Should I dance? Should I clap my hands and buy a nanach track? What should I do with it? I don't know. Okay, great. Find yourself. And when you're going to find yourself, finally, you're going to achieve such happiness that will show the light of the first man, the ancient man, Adam Kadmon, before of creation. You're going to see where your light is coming from. You are an endless, <coughs> infinite creation that doesn't have no limitations. You are one with Father in Heaven. You and the Creator and the Bible, the Torah, is one. Am Israel and HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Torah Kedoshah is one thing. You're one with it all. Now you can find yourself in, 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 in strip clubs. You can find yourself drunk, rolling in the streets. You can find yourself like, like the worst person in the world with no connection to Judaism, with no connection to purity. And you can say to me even, I'm not Jewish. I'm not Israeli. Okay, you said I'm Israel, but I'm not Jewish. I'm Mexican. I'm from Spain. I'm from, from Saudi Arabia. You think that you are from Saudi Arabia. You don't have a clue who you are and where your soul is coming from. Because if you're watching my videos, so something is wrong with you for sure. <laughs> something is very wrong with you. You would not belong to this world if you're watching my videos. <laughs> what are you doing here? Look at yourself, sitting in front of the computer, coming to my classes, listening. Who are you? You're a weirdo. <laughs> You're a weird person. Look at you. Look outside, look at the world, and look at yourself. Looking and searching and seeking to find an answer to your questions. You're a seeker. You're a truth seeker. You're a hidden righteous man. You're hidden from your own eyes. Your righteousness is hidden from your awareness. Yes, you're not aware to your holiness. That I can understand. But that you're going to tell me, no, I'm not. If you find comfort in my speeches, in my words, I won't buy it. I'm not going to believe you. That you're going to tell me that you're not righteous. Because I know your heart. Because I know my own heart. And my heart is a flaming fire to Hashem. I don't have anything else in my heart. My heart is empty. Offer me. Try me. Whatever you're going to offer. I don't want it. I don't need it. I have everything I need. What that I need is a little bit of quiet to, to remind myself again that Hashem is with me. That's the only thing I need. I need to think about Hashem. That's what I need. That's what I lack of. I just need to think about Him. That's the only thing I need. What else do I need except of to connect myself to the Creator? So there are going to be rabbis that will come to you and tell you, Listen, you want to connect yourself to Hashem? Listen, I finished the Likutei Moran 3,000 times before I got married. Okay, so that's your connection. I'm so happy for you. If I'm going to try to finish the Likutei Moran 3,000 times, it's going to kill my wife. It's not going to bring me to your salvation. Maybe it worked for you. I'm very happy for you. Amazing. Wow. Inspiring. But it doesn't work for me. Now, I'm not saying not to learn. Learn. But you should check exactly what are the amounts that will build you and not going to destroy you. Moses is able to climb to the holy mountains of Sinai to receive the Torah, 
to go and argue and fight with Hashem. Hashem is holding from one side of the holy tablets and Moses is holding from the other side and they're fighting and arguing and then Moshe overpowered with his power on the power of Hashem, of the creator of the universe and he took the Bible, he took the holy, uh, the holy tablets from Hashem. What? Yes, Moshe is able to do that, but there is a warning to all the rest of the people that no one is going to dare to climb. Why? Because, because they can ruin if they're going to try to climb. They're not qualified yet. They're not holy yet. Okay, so you need to check your level. Now you need to stand under the mountain, in the valley, in that low and shallow place in the darkness, behind that wall of, of thunders and clouds and darkness and over there visualizing and seeing all those boulders falling from the mountain and fire between all those thousands of people surrounding you. All of them are lost, no one knows what's going on, everyone are under so much pressure and stress. Okay, you need to find yourself between them. That's your job now. Fulfill your job. Do your job. Find your true self. Find yourself. Connect yourself to Hashem from that low and humble position. Be who that you are, who you are. Be that one that you've been sent to this world to be. Now a Baal Tshuva, a person that his job, and it's clear, my job, I'm a Baal Tshuva. I started my life in a secular family. There is no doubt about it. 100%. We were not keeping Shabbat. There, is, there are no arguments, no machloket on that thing. It's clear. We were not eating kosher. It's a known thing. I woke up while I was a soldier in the army in Israel. It's a known thing. There's no doubt that I'm a Baal Tshuva. Now, as a Baal Tshuva, what is my job? To come back to Hashem. That's my job. That's my path. That's my journey. It's clear. I started my life somewhere very, very far with no awareness to Hashem. Certain things in life qualified me to wake up when I'm going to be 20 years old. And when I reached that point in my life that I was ready, certain conversations and amazing situations that been supervised by Hashem opened my eyes to see, hey, something is weird here. There is a guiding hand. There is an individual supervision on your life. Look, your thoughts are taking place in the external world. You're thinking about something and someone is talking to you about your thoughts. Hey, something is weird. You're praying on something and suddenly you're being answered. Hey, there is a Creator. And I woke up. So now, as that person in the age of 20, what's my job? To try to go back and to find the roots of my soul. So I am a Baal Tshuva. Now, as a Baal Tshuva, as a person, that that is the path of his life, that's his journey. Why? That I'm going to suffer from the fact that I'm still not able to be righteous. Who is expecting me to be righteous? How can a person be righteous after growing up in a neighborhood that was not supportive, in a family that was not supportive, I mean to the holy path, to the observant path, to the orthodox path. It was not supportive. I didn't grow in that environment of learning Torah and knowing the, the rules of Judaism, all of the halachot. I didn't know how to keep Shabbat. I still don't know all the rules. I still, and thank God Hashem blessed me and I'm married and I have five children and I also need to make sure that million of other things in my life are going to be balanced and clear and okay so I also don't have the right time to invest in learning as much as I need if I want to be righteous and I don't have the time in my life to do enough tshuva and prayers and to go every day to the synagogue three times a day and to wake up midnight and also to wake up before of dawn and to, and to, and to, and to say Birkot HaShachar in a minyan because you need at least 10 people to answer Amen on your blessings. 
I won't be able to hold on to that schedule with my background, with who that I am, with my ability, with the, my wife's ability, with our children, and with all the obligations of my life. So now, as a Baal Tshuva, as a person that his path, and it's clear that his path is that he needs to work on himself, that he needs to fix himself, that he needs to come back to Hashem, why that I'm going to feel bad with myself on my lackings? If that's the path that Hashem carved for me, designed specially for me. Now, if Hashem would want to make me righteous, He, we know Him, He's got all the power and all the abilities and all the sources to do whatever He wants in His world. He could bring me down to earth in a different family, in a different neighborhood, different community, different area, that I'm going to have different teachers, that I'm going to have different mentality, different desires, that I'm just going to be pure and holy and calm and relaxed and never going to be angry and I won't have desires and lusts and I won't fail in any sin. If Hashem would want to make me that righteous, pure man that never sinned, He could have done that, but He didn't. So why that I'm going to chase myself on the fact that I need to be a Baal Tshuva, if that's the real path that Hashem wants me to walk in, and that I'm going to keep on dreaming to be righteous, 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 if that's not at all the path that Hashem wants me to walk in. Hashem wants me to do my job. So I need to open my eyes and to accept on myself to walk in the path of my life. And just to be as honest and as good and as nice and as kind as I can and to deal with all the difficulties and the obstacles and not to give up on the holy desire and the holy will to do the right thing and as much as you can. And we all must work on that to accept on ourselves the individual private supervision of the Creator on our lives. And you must stop chasing and blaming yourselves on who that you are not. When you can still enjoy and do so much with who that you are. With who that Hashem, the wisdom, the light, the source of good, the source of kindness made you to be. Stop arguing with the Creator and accept His creation. That He created you as you are, exactly. And with that you need to work. Now work. Now do as much as you can. Be friend of your friends. Be nice to your surroundings. Be generous to those ones that need your help. Be polite to the ones that are arguing with you and challenging your attributes. Be soft with the ones that wants to make you hard. Be hard on those ones that are trying to take advantage of you. You need to work on yourself to become that amazing person that Hashem wants you to be, made you to be, that you are, that you are, that you are, that you already. You don't need to go nowhere. You just need to understand the nature of your creation and to flow with it. And then you will see wonders. Then you will see what the Hashem treasured to you. People went to America to find diamonds, to find gold. They were chasing gold. On the way, they slaughtered millions of Native Americans. Why? Because they were blinded by their lusts and desires. People wants to go to live in the Holy Land of Israel. Amazing! On their way, they're sinning and criming and insulting and hurting and pushing and destroying each other and other nations that live in that area. And there's a war going on. Hey, it's not the will of Hashem. Hashem wants you to relax. Hashem wants you to be a positive person and to find yourself. Do you know the power of Hashem? If Hashem would want to make you rich, He can make you so rich. 
reach in ways that you cannot understand. You think that they found gold in that mountain, in that piece of land. You think that the holiness and purity is, is in Jerusalem, in, in, the, in front of the Mount of Olives, in the Western Wall. You don't know. You don't know the amounts of holiness and purity that you can find in your own house. You can never imagine the amount of gold and diamonds and wealth that you can find in your own basement, underground in your backyard. Hashem can bring gold under your house. Hashem can bring diamonds <coughs> under, your, under your, your footsteps when you walk. Hashem can bring the Shekhinah, the supervision, the light of Hashem, the Holy Spirit, to come into your house, into your life, even when you're in a foreign land, when you're not in Israel, when you're not in Jerusalem at all. When you're nice, when you're polite, when you're talking with your <coughs> wisdom, when you're not just expressing your stress and your frustration, when you're trying to work on yourself, Hashem will bless you in your actions, in your house, in your field, your animals, your friends, your business, your car, your truck. He will bless all that you have. Everything that is yours will be blessed. Just you need to understand who you are. And to let Hashem express His light through you. And then you can become like Moses, you can become like Elijah the prophet. Those flaming horses of fire are an example for you to learn from. You have your own obstacles, you have your own storm in life, you have your own temper, you have your own sadness and darkness. Those horses of darkness with lightnings coming out of their eyes is something that you can see in your own life. When you try to come closer and to do something good and suddenly the world is turning over you and suddenly such walls are being built in front of your eyes and you're not able to function and you say I just want to pray a little bit I just want to guard my eyes a little bit I just want to think for a minute and from heaven they're saying you're not gonna think and you're not gonna pray you're not gonna learn and you're not gonna set your schedule and you're not gonna eat kosher and you're not gonna daven you're not gonna keep Shabbat and you're not gonna go to the mikveh and you're not gonna take your haircut before of the holidays and you're not gonna have time to cut your fingernails they will put every possible obstacle in front of your path when you desire to climb above the physicality of this world and it's coming only for one reason. And if you're gonna unite yourself with that reason, if you're gonna accept on yourself the supervision of Hashem, the real desire of the King of Honor to be respected, to be honored, those obstacles, those flaming horses won't be able to stop you. They won't be able to stop you. If you're going to understand that all those difficulties are coming only to stop you from disrespecting Hashem, you will work on yourself to learn how to respect Hashem and then you will be able, like Elijah the prophet, to ride on those horses in the time of storm, they're going to be the elevator that will uplift you, that will take you to places that for you today they are, they are defined as the unknown. For you it's top secret. It's above your ability to understand, to grasp. And Hashem can take you there in a second on the back of a flaming horse that will rise you straight to heaven and you're not gonna die. And you're not gonna die if you're gonna nullify yourself to the will of Hashem. Hashem is rebuking you and holding you back only that you're gonna learn what you need to fix. And only because that He, with His merciful kind eyes, saw that you want to respect Him, that you want to learn. So He's teaching you. 
And He's rebuking you because He loves you. Because He sees in your eyes that flaming holy fire of your soul that is carved from under the throne of honor. Because you and Him and the Torah Kedosha is one. And He remembers that. Just we forgot that. So we need to remind ourselves of that fact. I'm a holy child of the Creator and I'm not moving anywhere. I'm going to do my job and I'm not going to drop the will and my holy desire. And I'm just going to reconnect myself to Him if I'm working and if I'm not working. If I'm praying and if I'm not praying. If I'm waking up early enough, if I'm waking up very late. If I'm still using drugs or I'm not. If I'm still drinking, if I'm not. If I fixed myself in the aspects of holiness and purity or if I'm failing on daily basis and even several times a day failing, I will keep on pushing forward, not backing off, not giving up. I'm going to remind myself that there is no despair in this world and all of the obstacles and all of the difficulties are just coming to wake me up to believe in Father in heaven and to try to respect Him, to try to commit myself to His work, to remind myself of His existence in my life. That's the highest, highest, highest level of them all. The Torah and the commandments and all the obligations been given to us to keep us busy, occupied in serving Him. In your life you can reach a place that you are holding in a place that for you to serve Him is something that you do with your mind, is not something that you do with your hands. It doesn't mean that it exempts you from keeping Torah Mitzvot. No, you're keeping Torah Mitzvot as much as you can with all your power, with the, the source of power that you suck out of your own life. As much as you can, you do. But to live while keeping them, v'chai bahem, and not to die, while keeping them. Do as much as you can to serve Hashem, but try to know Hashem. Try to understand Hashem. Don't follow people. Follow the truth. And the truth is not something far. The truth is not written in the books, in the bookcase, in the mouth of the righteous ones. No. It's in your mouth and in your heart to do, to keep. When I'm asking you, are you busy? You know if you're busy or if you're not. If I'm asking you, can you help? You know the truth if you can help or if you don't want to help. If someone told you, hey, you forgot to call me, you know if you forgot to call him or that you decided not to call him. You know the truth in every situation. Don't exempt yourself from your ability to know the truth. You're choosing to ignore the truth million times a day. But the truth is something that you can recognize. And if you really want to be a person of truth, so just be truthful. If your wife, she says something to you and it shakes your stability, don't be fast to reject her rebuke because you feel not a comfortable feeling from her. Just try to listen to her voice. Like Abram was doing with his wife Sarah. Listen to her voice. What is she saying? That you're lazy? You are lazy. That you're lying? That you don't care about her? You're lying. You don't care about her. So why won't you work on caring her? Work on yourself to stop lying. Stop exempting yourself from the obligations. Stop letting other people do things for you because it's more comfortable to you when you're lazy. Why won't you stop? Why won't you try to work on yourself not to be lazy? 
not to be a coward. Why won't you try to be a man, to be a person of truth? Work on yourself and then you will see results to your effort. If you will just exempt yourself by being religious, no, I must run, no, I must do. What do you want from me? What does she want from me? I must be religious now. It's not going to bring you anywhere. You're not going to find what that you want. You're not going to find what that your heart is seeking for. Your heart is seeking for the truth. And as long as you're lying to yourself, allowing your laziness and your sadness and your depression and your, 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 your anger that you're not taking care of, to control your mind and to take decisions for you, so you're not overpowering those horses that are coming in the storm. But if you're going to take over, and when you're angry, you're going to breathe, and when you're sad, you're going to be aware to the fact that you're sad now, and you're not going to justify your sadness and your angers, and you're going to understand that you need to work on yourself to be a happy person and not to explode when you're angry. And you're just going to try to admit and to drop your bad behaviors and manners and to pray for the things that you don't know how to solve yet. But you're going to start and you're going to be honest. Then you're going to find comfort and satisfaction from your life. After admitting and apologizing to your wife that you were wrong, suddenly you're going to be better friends than you were, and for sure than you would be if you would keep on lying to each other. By uncovering the truth and giving it space in your life, you're bringing the light back into your life. You're bringing the light of the Creator that His seal is a seal of truth. In every place that you say truth, Hashem is there with you. In every place that you lie, you let darkness take over your life. And you reject Hashem. You reject the Creator. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. Means that when you say the truth, you're calling Him. When you say the truth, you're calling Hashem. Hashem hears the truth, He says, hey, I want to be there. Whoa, whoa, they're saying the truth. Hey, Hashem is coming. Hashem sees truth. Oh, I'm coming. He's joining the party. Oh, people are honest. Hashem is saying, oh, yeah, I'm coming. And the blessing is coming. And blessing your house and your field and your animals and your business and your car and your truck. And whatever you need, you're going to have when you're going to attach yourself to the truth. The truth is Hashem's light in the world. And the truth is something that is close to you. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart. You recognize the truth. If I'm telling you you're a liar, you know the truth. If you were not lying, you say, no, I was not lying. But if you lied, you know. You know the truth. It's easy to exempt ourselves from the shame of our real condition that we failed in lies. And to try to plaster on our life and to cover our life with the religion fantasy. Oh, but I'm waking up nets. Oh, but I'm going three times a day to shul. Oh, I'm not shaving my face with a razor. Oh, I'm eating kosher. It doesn't exempt you from the way of the land, of manners, of behaviors. Those things are, are prior. They're, they're before. They're, in, 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 they're the, the foundations of the Bible. You cannot keep Shabbat when you're a crook, when you're an animal, when you're vicious. Even if you do everything, if you sleep in the, in the synagogue. You're an animal that lives in the synagogue. The animal cannot keep Shabbat. If you're not a human being, if you don't have manners, it's nothing. An animal. An orthodox animal. It's nothing, it's silly. Looks silly, right? Also, it smells bad. But when you work on yourself, you become righteous. And to work on yourself into, is to work on your true self. It's, it's really to be yourself. 
You don't need to change. You don't need to be me. You're never going to be me. I'm never going to be you. You don't need to be that rabbi or like that amazing person. No, it's not your life story. Wake up. You are who you are. That's who you are. You are who you are. That's who you are. You are who you are. That's it. Not more, not less. Just the truth is that it's much, much more than you know. Because you don't know who you are yet. Because you're not aware to all of your spiritual aspect, all of your, your spiritual side. You don't know. You know from outside, you know from the mirror, you know from your accidents in life, you know from the words that came out of your mouth accidentally. You don't know your thoughts even. You're not aware to, to your intelligence, to the endless spring of, of, of blessing that sits in the back of your mind. You don't know which angel you are. You don't know what's going to be revealed in the redemption day. You don't know. You still don't know who you are. You don't know. Do you really know who you are? You don't have a clue who you are. You know your name, you know your address, you know the, the, the size of your shoes. You don't know. You know you failed in this, you remember yourself here and there, you know that you're afraid, you know... You don't know the essence of your life. You don't know who you are. You're a pearl, you're, you're, you're spiritual. You're not in this place at all. You're part of heaven. You're a soul, you're a godly soul, part of heaven from above. That's who you are. Now, let it shine. Okay, it's a deal. Thank you. Hazak Baruch. I'm on a project. Help us. Help us to help you. <laughs> Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.